Let's bow our heads and let us pray. Father in heaven, we bless your name this morning for the privilege of life. We thank you that we can be gathered around this altar. We ask for your presence to be in our midst and make use of me to your glory. Not I, but Christ. Be honored, loved, and exalted. Not I, but Christ. Be seen, be known, and be heard. Not I, but Christ. In every look and action, not I, but Christ. In every thought and word, in Jesus' name, amen. I... I welcome you to this session today, and it's such a privilege to have you to join us uh, for this session. For those of you joining us online, we welcome you to day number four of our 10 days of prayer, which is Christian Back to the Altar. It is titled Back to the Altar, and it is our hope and our belief that this session should be a blessing and you will be restored to the altar as God will have it. I bring you greetings from my family and also from uh, our entity uh, in Ghana. We called the CAM. It stands for the Center for Outreach, Mentorship and Empowerment. During this afternoon session, I will talk a little more about it Evangelism, as you know, it has changed. The various dimension of outreach is completely different today. If our church will be relevant and impactful and influence the world, there must be a unique module in implementing this everlasting gospel. First, to the classes the church hit to is not able to reach, the upper classes of the community, and then the institutions of learning, we call it the marketplace, and then the centers of learning. Uh, during the afternoon, I will share with you some strategic modules that had been used and implemented to make uh, the necessary impact and bring the gospel in a very friendly and a very impactful way to various communities, various institutions. During the afternoon session as well, I will talk about what other young people are doing across the continent of Africa and how we can all learn around it and make the necessary impact we ought to make. But for this moment, I want to state that we changed the subject matter for today. And uh, instead of talking about the theme or the subject, do it again, Lord. During last night's uh, prayer and meditation, uh, this done, I sent a message to the leadership of the church to forgive me. I wish I could have done differently, but I think God has impressed on me seriously to share a different message than what I have shared with them for which the posters were prepared. So our subject for today is go back to Bethel. Go back to Bethel instead of do it again, Lord. As I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Can someone say a hearty amen out there? Amen. No, that is a weak one from Nairobi Central. Can someone say a hearty amen out there? Amen. Your church is too calm. It's like you are all told if you open your mouth, you are going to be beaten. Can somebody say an amen out there? Amen. Uh-huh. Tell somebody that please speak out when it is necessary. It is like there is a Sabbath school teacher with a cane on your head and said you better, you know. Anyway, I make to you four promises Promise number one is the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. The reason is the Bible means what it says and says just what it means. Promise number two, you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. Promise number three is you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. 
And promise number four, our lives, your life and mine, will never be the same. Over the past three days, the fourth day today, we have been dealing with a broader theme, back to the altar. I gave an entire framework. Because time is not on my hand, I will not be able to elucidate on that a little more. On day one, we dealt with broken, barren, and then battered altered. It's about us. Go to the YouTube, you'll get the details. Day two, we dealt with building, burning, and basking altars. Our only way out. Day number three was yesterday. We dealt with barriers and blessings to building, burning, and basking altars. But for this morning, we want to deal with a different subject matter. But may I remind you, the altar is the place of sacrifice. Christ sacrificed himself on the altar for sin. But today, we must all get to the altar so that we can be sacrificed to sin through a life of consistent daily devotion. Take your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, chapter 35. It's going to be a Bible study, so please kindly open your Bible. I will ask you to flip and I will run with the speed of light so that we can cover the ground necessary. Um, Genesis chapter 35, verse 1 says, Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. This is the framework on which this message today, go back to Bethel, we are going to deal with it. Go back to Bethel. What does this mean? To understand, go back to Bethel as a message, we need to go to Genesis chapter 28. We need to look at verse 10 through to verse 22, but I will just speak some spotlight. I'm giving a broad framework, and then which we can glean some lessons. Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10, uh, but I'll focus on from verse 19. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been lax previously. Take note. Jacob is the one they are talking about. He named a place Bethel. Then verse 20 says, Then Jacob made a vow at Bethel and said, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And all that you give me, I will surely give a thing to you. In, in context, Jacob was in the desert of Beersheba as a fugitive. He had only a staff in his hand. His life was under threat. Esau has vowed that he will not leave. He must be killed. With nothing in his hand, Jacob reached his wit end and there he made a vow to God and he says, if you only take me and bring me back again, you God, you shall be my God and this place, Bethel, shall be called a house of prayer. Let me put it again in a better framework. When you study the book of Genesis quite carefully, verse chapter 28, Jacob vowed at Bethel. Then in chapter 29, Jacob arrives in Padam Aram. You know, in Padam Aram, Jacob, there he met a ritual and got married to Rachel and Leah. You know the story. In chapter 30, Jacob requested to be sent away. I want to go. Then in chapter 31, Jacob flew or fled from Laban and he was pursued and there he made a covenant between himself and Laban. There we have the story of Mizpah. May the Lord watch between you and I, even as we depart one from another. In chapter 32, Jacob prepared to meet Esau. 
And there he wrestled with an angel throughout the night. Genesis chapter 33, Jacob and Esau, they met and Jacob stayed in Canaan at Sukkoth. Take note of this. Then in Genesis chapter 34, Dinah was raped and there was a massacre. You recall that the, they raped Jacob's daughter and Jacob was so angry and was so mad. When the sons killed the, 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 the folks in the area, Jacob said, to Simon and Levi. You have troubled me by making me obnoxious or hateful among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am in few number, they will gather themselves together and, and, and kill me. I shall be destroyed. Why do you trouble me, my household and I? Then they responded, Simon and Levi said, should that priest be treated just anyhow and our sister be treated like a harlot. So Genesis chapter 34, Jacob was scared. Now my brother wants to kill me. Now I am among strangers and my sons have given me headache. This leads us to Genesis chapter 35. It was this background that God appeared to Jacob. I can't go home. I can't stay here. My life is in a difficulty. Then God said to Jacob, Arise in the midst of your fears, in the midst of your uncertainty. I command you, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Let me give another background. From Genesis chapter 28 to Genesis chapter 35, it's about 30 years. It's about how many years? From Genesis chapter 33 to Genesis chapter 35, it's about 10 years. Just follow very carefully. So when you check the chronology of events, in Genesis chapter 33, we said Jacob and Esau, they met. In Genesis chapter, chapter 34, Dinah was raped. But I'm saying from Genesis chapter 33 to chapter 35, he said 10 years. God never told Jacob, do anything for 10 years. God was silent. After all the leadings in Jacob's life, God became silent for 10 years. Why? Jacob was not listening to the promptings of God. His altars were cold. So he needed to travel. Just see, from the Syrian desert down to the Lebanon mountains, Jacob was to pick his life and now face his brother. He now needs to return. Genesis chapter 31 verse 3. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family and I will be with you. This was chapter 31. Jacob never went. God was clear. Return. He would not go. Then in Genesis chapter 30, before God would tell him, go back to your father's house, in Genesis chapter 30, he was hearing some rumors. Genesis 30 verse 27, but Laban said to him, if I found favor in your sight, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Now that he wants to go in chapter 30, listen, Laban will not let him go. But at this time, the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flowers, female, male seven, and camels, and donkey. Laban was being blessed. And Jacob says, I also now want to go. Then God confirmed, go. It's like the SEA team, I will go. Genesis chapter 31. Now Jacob heard, now follow me. You know when we come to church these days, there is not much the using of the brain. So follow 
follow with the head and the heart. Genesis chapter 31. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son. Why did he want to go? In chapter 30, he wanted to go on his own. Then chapter 31, God said, go, go, go. He will not move. Then God said, let me let you hear what is happening behind the scene. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. And from what was our father's, he has acquired all this wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban. And indeed, it was not favorable to, towards him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return, return to the land of your fathers and to your family. If you are afraid, I will be with you. Somebody say an amen out there. Sometimes it is in our best interest to walk away. Based on what you have heard and what you have seen. Let me say differently. Sometimes for us to fulfill God's will and God's purpose for our lives, we need to walk away. Sometimes, even from the Christian crowd, we need to set ourselves aside. Why? Based on what we have heard and what we have seen. So Jacob needed to move from Bathsheba to Haran. So after God told him in chapter 31, go, he refused to go from chapter 33, chapter 34, up to chapter 35, God said, I am tired. I have no message for you anymore. He would not listen. Then in chapter 35, God says, let me take time and explain to you, you stubborn child, what the issues are. Now, God said to Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Bethel means a house of God. El, uh, Elohim, Beth house. Like we have Bethany. Beth in the Greek means, or it means a house. Thani means a bitter. So house of bitterness, or house of fig. Bethlehem, Bethlehem bread, house of bread. So house of God. Here is the first main message after this background. Bethel is a call to remember. Many of us, our altars are barren. Our altars are broken. Our altars are battered. And the simple reason, like Jacob, we have forgotten where we are coming from. As I came to this church and I'm watching and I see you move back and forth and I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what should they hear? Ladies and gentlemen, in Nairobi Central and those watching online, in your life, God has been good to us. God has been kind to us. But we do not have a burning altar. And the reason is we have forgotten we have forgotten. The Bible says, therefore, God says, you just, listen, go to Bethel and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Some of us, when we were in a danger, we were about to die, about to die in an accident. Some of us, our lives, listen, if your parents, and if you look back at where you came from, you, you, will, you will hush in humility. Listen, you have forgotten the vows you have made when things were tough for you. Some of you, when you were in secondary school, no hope to go to university, and God in his providence made a way through a theophanic way, you got some sponsorship, you got some destiny helpers, you got some privileges. Today, you have arrived. Guess what? You are in Genesis chapter 35. You have forgotten that you made a vow. I will be faithful to the Lord. I will do this to the Lord. Things are better today. You have forgotten. This, in, case, in case you forget all I'm saying, God is telling you, 
I have not forgotten the vows you have made. I hold you accountable to the promises you have made to me. Someone without a child. And for years, Lord, bless my womb and bless my loin. Today, you have a child and the child is now a demigod. Remember. Remember your battle. If I were to have time, we would have sung the song, When upon life's billows you are tempted sore. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Nairobi Central members, count your blessings, many blessings, and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Will you not say an amen out there? You see, the, the, the author says, are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings. Every doubt will fly and you will be singing as the days goes by. Some of you are here, when you look at others with their lands and their gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings. Money cannot buy your reward in heaven, nor your home on high. I will say with the psalmist, I bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in grace. Remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you ability. The Hebrew word that means might. It means ideas. Today, in our ranks, people have been blessed by God and they have forgotten. That's Josiah, Josh. The king did not remember. He forgot the kindness which his father, Jehoiada, has shown him, but he murdered his son. And as he died, he says, may the Lord see and avenge. We are ruthless and very wicked and mean even to our neighbors. Why? We have forgotten where we have come from. When you see, I don't know about here, the politics in the church, the politics at the workplace, and some of us are he actors in them. Hey, you have forgotten where God has taken you from. Remember, have you forgotten? Go back to your battle. In fact, Kenya should not forget. This blessed nation must never forget. Your son says, if, if, if they can help us, we'll sing just some part. Oh God of all creation. Bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Let one and all arise with hearts both strong and true. Service be our earnest endeavor. And our homeland of Kenya, heritage of splendor, firm may we stand to defend. Your standard says, let all with one accord in common bound unite. Build this our nation together. And the glory of Kenya, the fruit of our labor, fill every heart with thanksgiving. Can we sing this song? Is it known? Is it a known song? We are going to sing it today. Let me upstand it. We are singing all the stanzas. Even if this is where my message ends, it must be said. Kenya, you cannot forget your Bethel. When this nation was going through crisis, people were praying, Lord, protect our bodies. Guide our children. Pro protect our, our, our troops. Today, Kenyans are living as if there is no God. God called on Kenya. Today, remember your battle. Remember when you were in servitude. Remember when you were not a free republic or, or, or democracy. See the way Kenyans treat God today. With disdain, 
with disbelief, with disrespect. No honesty in the land. Just like my country. Corruption everywhere. In the Christian community, we are key actors. And the simple reason we have forgotten where we have come from. Can we sing that song? Oh God of all creation. I ask you today, have we forgotten? Have we forgotten so soon? In the next 15 years, will there be any cultural ethos in Kenya? Will there be any morality and any sensibleness among the youth? Simple. We have forgotten. Parents who were once poor and today are rich, they have forgotten. Children who came from very disadvantaged backgrounds, we have forgotten. Today there is a life of entitlement. And it's not just a Kenyan thing. It's worse in my country. It's worse across the continent. I dare say our church has even forgotten. We started, no one respected us. It was a movement. A movement that is carrying a message to the world to hasten the return of Jesus. Today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has forgotten her battle. When we are saying back to the altar, it means back to battle. Back to the place of your beginning. Back to the place of your transformation. Back to the place of your redemption. Back to the place of your mission. Back to the place of your mission. Back to the reason and our purpose of existence as a people. Our church has forgotten. The pastors have forgotten. The elders have forgotten. Now we want to be like one of the churches in the world. We have forgotten. Now we have institutions. Now we have schools. Now we have members in respectable places. Now we have money. So our church has forgotten. I dare say the Christian world has forgotten. In the third century, in the second century, to be a follower of Christ was a religious eliciter. It was a cry to be a Christian. But today, we have forgotten. When we talk about battle, I don't have time on my hand. It's not just about remember. It's about return. 
return so you remember remember where you are coming from remember the circumstances that led you to be a married woman a husband you remember you remember how you were jobless and now you have something to eat Bethel means remember 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 you were nobody Today, God has made you a somebody. Remember. When we remember, we will treat others with Christian piety, grace, candor, and, and respect and dignity. Remember. But much more than remember, Bethel is a call to return. Look at the text carefully. Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. You have been to Bethel before. Go up. It means go back to Bethel. You have been there. Bethel, God calls on Jacob. And he calls on the church today to return. This call is applicable to us. Return. Return to where you were. It reminds me of a message to the church in Ephesus. Bethel is not just about return. It's about repent. I don't have the time. When you remember where you were coming from, then you return to where you were, you were to be. And it means you must repent. When the church is saying, back to the altar, it means we are at a place we mustn't be. So remember the altar. Return to the altar. And then you do all. Repent. Go back to Bethel. Revelation 2 verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write. This thing says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand. Who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear uh, those who are evil and who have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not and are found to be liars. And you have per persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, and then you do all oh, repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you do all oh, repent but this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I hate also the basic messages whenever we remember our battle there is a U-turn a return and then there is also a sense of war repent Go back to Bethel. This church. Are you at the state you used to be? Nairobi Central. Listen, don't deceive yourself. You are not doing well. You can be in Nairobi and tell yourself, we are doing well. I can tell you with all honesty, this church is sick. You, the church members, you are sick. This church is not living up to its ideals and its power, its ability, and its mandates. How many are you in this church? What is the number of church members who are active with the Lord and bringing others to the Savior dispassionately every single year? You gather on Sabbath as if you have come to Mecca. And then everybody wear their suits. And then you give yourself some high five. And you are so excited with the glamour. Listen, nothing is going on here. Forgive me. This church. By that I mean you as an individual. You can become better. You have forgotten where you are coming from. Listen, I don't know how to scream it, but the church has forgotten where she is coming from.
I've not even done one-fifth of this message. I want to make an appeal. We'll sing the song. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be, lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow. Lead me to Calvary. We want to sing all the stanzas. If you are in this church and you see yourself as someone who is a recipient of the glory, the favor, the kindness, the mercy, the goodness of God, yet you have forgotten that you've made a vow to God. Some of you made vows of how much you invest in God's work, how much of your life you give to the Lord. Today, you have turned away from that vow. Lest I forget Gethsemane. If that song is the representation that I need to remember, I need to return, I need to repent. When we sing the last stanza, wherever you are, just be on your feet. We'll pray a dedicatory prayer. A prayer that is saying, remember the altar, return to the altar, repent, and, uh, and sacrifice yourself to sin at the altar. We'll be seated. As they lead us, we'll sing all the stanzas. King of my life, I crown thee now. Three, one, seven. Central, lift up your voice. the glory be. Lest I forget thy crown, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget get money. Lest I forget thy forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, so just lead me to Calvary, lead me to Calvary. show me the tomb where thou was laid, show me the tomb where thou was laid, Tenderly. Tenderly. let me mourn, let me weep. Are the grave angels were in ropes? Because God wants to save you. They guarded the King of Majesty while he was disgracefully killed because of you. If you want to forget the altar, remember Gethsemane. Somebody died on that altar. He died for sin. You may die to sing. Forget that agony. Lest I forget the love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Lead me to Calvary. Sing the first stanza. Let me like Mary through the blue. Let me like Mary through the blue. If I don't forget, I will come with the king. Because I can't forget my Bethel. Show, to Show me where the tomb is. Look chapter 24. The women were coming with their oil. They can't forget. Just lead me to come. This week, this year, when you are tempted to fornicate, just remember the prize at Calvary. When you are tempted to steal, just remember the prize at Calvary. If you are tempted to lie, just remember Gethsemane. If you are tempted to dishonor the Lord, just remember Gethsemane. See the prize, see the sacrifice. We'll sing the reference two times. If you are in the audience or elsewhere, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to make God the ruler of your life. I want you to stand in the auditorium. Those of you online type, I connect to this altar. I want to give my life to Jesus. On this altar I want to say Lord this day 
I commit myself. The price of my redemption is a man's life, is God's life. I don't want to live 2023 in chambering, in reveling, in drunkenness, in wantonness. I want God to do something about my Bethel. I want to return. Let's sing the refrain two more times, lest I forget. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thy Lest I forget. See the way God was crying when he was dying at Calvary. Lest I forget thy love for me. We'll sing it one more time. Lead me to Calvary. Lead me to Calvary. Sing it very prayerfully, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Lest I forget Gethsemane. You keep singing that song, Father in heaven. As the congregation sing this refrain, it's not just a song, it's a committal prayer. In case we forget our Bethel, a place you were kind to us, a place you were kind to us. May we remember it costs a man's blood. We pray for the church in Kenya. Just like in my country when politics want to take over the moral grains of the church. Let the leaders of the church, let the members of the church remember this is not one of the churches. It is a movement. It is God's end time remnant of Bible prophecy. In case we want to treat the spiritual office mundane, may we remember. We pray for the politicians of Kenya. We pray for the politicians of our countries across the world. Anytime they are tempted, some of them from very low exit background, today they steal, they steal and steal with impunity. We pray today for the elected officers of our land, the judiciary, those who work in the legislature, those in the private sector. We pray for the community of faith around the world. When this year, 2023, we are tempted to abandon our faith, to jettison our belief. We pray, may we remember our battle. May we return to our battle and may we repent of our sins. We pray today for a man who wants to leave the wife in pursuit of another woman. We pray today for a man who has left his home and is wanting around the world and the wife is heavy hearted. The children are discouraged. You see a woman who is cantankerous in their home. No Christian ethos, no love, no support system. Today, may we remember Calvary. We pray for our young people. When they are tempted to drink alcohol, when they are tempted to engage in LGBTQ, lesbianism, and homosexuality, and they are sleeping around aimlessly, and they smoke, and they are into gambling, and into all sorts of life, today, on this altar, may we remember you call us today, the second Sabbath of the year, to return to our battle. Oh Lord, please bless us. Out of this audience, including myself, let this message prepare somebody. This may be someone probationary message may this message prepare our heart prepare our spirit that we must go back to Calvary we say until we meet again may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the spirit abide with us now and forevermore amen you can be seated